laser gain in another slightly different context. And that's how the gain in the laser evolves over time. Uh, here we have our laser system, and here's our gain medium. And at some time, uh, T equals zero, we're going to start some pumping process, which starts to raise electrons from state one up into state two. And that's going to get our laser going. And so this pumping process has happens, and we'll write some differential equations for that in the next couple of weeks. But let's look at this in a more qualitative way first. So as soon as we turn on the pump, what's going to happen? And that's shown in this figure right here, where we have essentially a stimulated emission term, which I'm showing in pink here, starting to rise up. We're starting to get a little bit of light, and that light essentially is a function of frequency or wavelength, um, follows the line shape curve. A little bit later in time, uh, the light's gotten brighter. We've essentially lifted more atoms up into state two. It's become a steady state process, and that light is starting to get brighter. Um, but you'll notice all it's doing is emitting light in all directions because the photons have not yet had a chance to come and hit the mirrors and bounce back through here a couple of times. Later on in time, um, you start to get the rise of this green curve that's overlaid on top of the pink curve. Our stimulated emission has gotten stronger, and we're starting to see, excuse me, the spontaneous emission, so let's write that, spontaneous emission has gotten stronger still. It's at its steady state value now, and the stimulated emission has started to rise up, but there's no frequency dependence. It essentially looks like the spontaneous emission because all the wavelengths of light are being amplified frequency equally. The photons that started here have made their way through the gain medium, and they've been ampli amplified, and we're starting to get a stimulated emission term that's rising up and has the same dependence as the spontaneous emission. A little bit later in time, the photons that were cr that first created in the cavity have made several round trips through this laser. And as they bounce back and forth, um, they're beginning to realize that certain frequencies aren't being reinforced. They're not allowed. They're not longitudinal modes of the cavity. And our stimulated emission is starting to drop down a little bit because more and more, or excuse me, our spontaneous emission in the pink has started to drop down a little bit. And our stimulated emission is starting to get a bit of frequency dependence that follows the longitudinal modes as it realizes that some frequencies are allowed and some frequencies aren't allowed. And the reason the stimulated emission is rising up is because it's getting amplified. And the reason the spontaneous emission is dropping down is there are fewer atoms that are not being stimulated that can go to spontaneous emission because the stimulated emission process happens much more quickly than the spontaneous emission process. A little bit later in time, you see this trend, in fact, increasing. And you'll notice that certain longitudinal modes are getting amplified more than other longitudinal modes. They're no longer equal. And the reason for this is that the amount of gain is proportional to the number of photons that are present. So the photons that are present in the largest number, which is going to be the peak right there, are going to be amplified more than the other ones. They're actually going to steal energy away from the other modes. And they're also stealing energy away from the spontaneous emission. As we go further along, we see this happens more and more. The other modes are starting to collapse. All their energy is being given to the dominant mode. The spontaneous emission is almost gone. And in steady state, we get a very small spontaneous emission term. And the laser is now operating on a single mode, if the laser is working well, that is very, very strong compared to any of the other modes. Let's take a look at gain um, in one more fashion before we end the mini lecture and look a little bit about how things would happen in a cavity. Uh, here we have our cavity again with our gain medium. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a frequency near the center of our gain curve, or the center of our line shape or cross, or, or cross section here. Um, and we're going to assume that's wrong. N2 should be greater than N1 here. So we're going to have gain. And let's take a look and start a photon packet right here that's going to propagate along in this direction. That's shown by the blue line right here. And so this photon propagates. And of course, it's not going through any gain medium. So the packet of photons is going to have intensity 1, we'll say. As it hits the interface, there's going to be some loss due to reflection. Not all of it's going to make it through that interface because of reflection loss. And we see the overall intensity, or number of photons, drops a little bit. But as it goes to the gain medium, we get this exponentially increasing power. And so we get a large number of photons coming out, which then suffer reflection loss. Have a constant number traveling to the second mirror here. Um, 
but the reflectivity is not perfect and we get a little bit of a loss coming off the second mirror. As they travel back, the number remains the same. We get a reflection loss, more gain, a reflection loss, we stay the same. And now we've almost made one round trip through the cavity. As we bounce off the back mirror, we get a little bit of a reflection loss and then back through the system again. And the important thing to note here, as we've traveled through the entire system, looking at gains and losses at each point, after we've made one round trip, the number of photons or the intensity is higher than it was before. There's amplification of the light. Now let's take a look at a case where we are not at the peak of the gain curve, where we're right here. And let me go ahead and get a red pin here. We're off the gain curve, so our gain's not quite as high. We wouldn't expect to have the same amount of amplification. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, we'll start off again with our photons here, right at the mirror heading in that direction. And of course, they remain constant with a value 1. We get our reflection loss. And now look, our gain's not quite as high. We're not quite as high above this line as we were before because the gain's not as big. A reflection loss, constant. Reflection loss off the mirror. Reflection loss off the gain medium, another reflection loss, more gain, a reflection loss. We're right back down to where we started. We go back down through here to the mirror again. We get a reflection loss off the mirror and back in. And now you'll see rather than there being gain, the number of photons after one round trip is less than the number of photons than there were because we're not on the peak of the gain curve. So there is a relationship between the losses in the cavity and the gain as to whether a laser will operate or not. And this is discussed in your book, but in not such a graphic method. Let's take a look at one more case that we'll do in green. Um, and let's say a careless student uh, sneezes on the gain crystal and puts a big glob of snot on it, for example, which they try to wipe up but don't do a very good job at. Uh, and there's our glob of snot right there. Again, we start off with our photon packets right at that first mirror. We go through. We're operating in a high gain mode, so after our initial reflection loss at the surface of the crystal, we get a fair amount of gain back in the blue case. Now we see a bigger loss here because we've put some crud in the cavity. Um, it remains constant in the free space, reflection loss off the mirror, another big reflection loss, a lot of gain, reflection loss, back through, a reflection loss off the mirror, and we've made one round trip, and again we see a loss here. So it's not just the mirrors and the reflection losses, but any other losses in the cavity are going to contribute to the laser not working as well. And you have to balance the amount of gain you have versus the losses. So how could you have fixed this? Let's say, you know, if you clean this up, it's going to work. If you need to operate at this wavelength, then you need to put in more reflective mirrors or do something on the surface of your crystal so there's less loss. Another way to do this would be simply to have a longer gain medium. So instead of your gain starting at this point, it would basically start there and give you more gain. And so going to a longer gain medium may work if you have to operate at that wavelength as well. And so really laser operation is balancing gains with losses. And this is a function of frequency. It depends on N2 and N1. And it depends on other things in the cavity we'll study later.